experience in front of me. This is my five gallon bucket of coconut oil. Yes, I use a lot of coconut oil. Next is the lye and lard that I use. Lye can be very dangerous. Um, use with caution. It can leave chemical burns on your skin. It can even burn your eyes when you are mixing it with water. It'd probably be smart to use gloves and goggles. Next is the lard I use. My mom and I rendered this lard from some hogs that my husband raised. Next is my liquid oil. You can use canola oil, vegetable oil, but I prefer sunflower oil. It has um, the best qualities for your skin. Next is castor oil. You only use a little bit of castor oil in this recipe, but it's very important to get those nice big bubbles that we all like. Down here, I have my fragrance oil. This is cotton candy. I'm very excited to use it. I love cotton candy. This is a new fragrance that I'm trying out. The fragrances that I use only contain 20 strands or less of synthetic chemicals. If you were to go to a big name brand bath store, they have at least 200 or more synthetic strands in their products. So I prefer to stick with as natural as possible. My favorite items to work with usually are essential oils. You will need a variety of glass measuring bowls or cups. Over here is my mold. My, my dad helped me make this soap mold. It's just the right size for my recipe. I have it lined with press and seal. You'll need a digital scale, a thermometer, and a submersion blender. Get a good one because it goes through a lot of work. You will also need frozen goat's milk. This has to be frozen for your recipe. When you add it to your other ingredients, if it is not frozen, it will scald and it will ruin your recipe. Lastly, you will need a crock pot. I prefer one that has a low setting. If you can find one with a warm setting, that will work as well. Okay, let's get started. to blend and blend until it all becomes um, a little bit of a thick looking paste. It's going to look a little bit like glue, but maybe not quite that thick. So the real goal of getting it mixed so well is to um, combine your oils and your liquids together and make sure that that frozen goat milk has been completely emulsified with the rest of your ingredients. So now we do the hard part and we wait. This is set on low and I'm going to let it um, cook for one hour. Okay, now that our soap has been cooking for one hour, we're going to take it out of the crock pot. Carefully, it's very, very hot. We're gonna take the lid off to allow our mixture to cool down. If we started mixing the soap right now, we could have a soap volcano. Um, if it's too hot, all of the ingredients together gets the molecules moving too quickly and they just start growing and getting bigger and overflows everywhere. I have had this happen. There is no need to be in a hurry. So we are just going to wait about 10 more minutes, let this cool down, and we'll go from there. Okay, now hopefully it's cool enough to start blending together without having a bad reaction. Now is the 
time that you're going to get a workout because getting all of this liquid, you see how thin it looks and how easy it is to stir around, kind of soupy looking. Now is the time that you're going to get a workout because we're going to use the immersion blender to get this into a very pasty form. Um, so pasty that it's going to have peaks that are going to be able to stand up once we lift out our blender. Okay, so after a long time of mixing, you can finally see that I am to a very pasty stage. Um, if I lift my blender out, I can see that peaks stay up really high and really thick. So I'm going to make sure that the temperature of the soap is low enough to add our fragrance in it. Um, if you have your soap too hot, then your fragrance is going to evaporate um, and you're not going to have much of a smelly soap. That is where your thermometer comes in handy. This is still just a little bit too hot, so I'm going to wait about five or ten more minutes and take the temperature again. See, if it comes down, I like it to be below 190 degrees. Right now, it's still over 200 degrees. Okay, so I let it sit for ten more minutes. Now I'm going to check the temperature once again. Once all of the soap is in the mold, I use my spatula to make sure that there's no air bubbles in where I added the new soap. I get it really good in the corners, and then I shape my soap uh, the way I want it to look. So I just bring the edges up. I like my soap to have the traditional old-fashioned lye soap look, and it is definitely as ugly as homemade soap. <laughs> This is my final product, and I will let it sit in the mold for 24 hours, and it will be just hard enough to take out, take the uh, press and seal off, let it sit for another 24 hours, and then finally we will get to cut it. Thank you for watching my soap tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. See you next time.